Hello, my name is Justin Harrison. I'm an HP IT Performance Suite Certified Expert with Configure Consulting, with many years experience implementing and customizing enterprise class IT solutions. Configure Consulting implements quick start solutions to empower IT operations teams with the efficiency, stability, and top performance in the delivery of business services, technical assessments, implementation, upgrade, training, and staff augmentation services around discovery, monitoring, asset management, and automated solutions. Over the next 10 minutes, you'll learn about HP's release control product that provides IT change managers with near real-time analysis as an actionable intelligence decision support solution. In fact, the reporting and filtering features of release control provide excellent visibility on factors directly affecting an organization but usually remain hidden without adequate tools like release control. Release control includes the ability to generate trend reports with the most up-to-date information in seconds. Here's an example of a changes over time trend report. This enables IT staff to visualize the total changes occurring on a weekly or monthly basis. And change managers can even use filters, which we introduce later, to see different perspectives such as only hardware, software, or almost any other options one needs. Here's another trend report that includes abnormal changes over time, and this enables you to identify changes that occur or at least scheduled for a time when changes should not normally occur. For instance, a change to a database server supporting the production environment should not occur during prime time business hours. Thus, seeing any or specifically too many abnormal changes indicates a trend manager's need to remediate or mitigate quickly. This next trend report provides information on latent changes over time. And these are results of changes the CMDB detects but cannot match the change to any scheduled changes within release control. Thus again, this indicates changes are occurring that possibly were not even authorized, or at least not reviewed by the change management team. Thus, this too reveals a concern businesses want and need to prevent. Without release control, just collecting these basic reports presents a daunting challenge. Just like the trend reports, release control provides change analysis reports that help identify a company's pain points. This report provides detailed statistics broken out by each business application. Even better, this report breaks out statistics for each business application by the application severity level, or in other words, the business criticality of the application and change requests. Providing managers with this information enables them to identify not only the most problematic applications, but also just how serious or complex the problem is to the application's functionality. This way management can identify which applications generate the most problems along with the severity level of the change requests related to each application. With this information managers can even determine the feasibility of replacing, updating, or even eliminating specific problem applications. Another change analysis report is application status that provides similar information but it also enables management to identify problem areas like applications where obtaining approval is taking too long. Changes getting approved but not getting closed and several other useful statistics in one simple graphical report. The last change analysis report provides impact analysis ratio statistics. And this enables change managers to even recognize increasing numbers of changes for which no impact analysis results exist. This usually indicates the CMDB team needs to modify or create additional impact analysis rules to ensure every change is analyzed for what the change could impact. The post-implementation reports also provide highly valuable statistics, including outcome over time, that helps identify trends such as an increasing or decreasing number of failed, successful, canceled, or even successful with problems changes. In addition, by applying a filter, change managers could even identify increasing or decreasing trends for a specific implementer. The other post-implementation report helps identify the percentage of changes for the outcome of each change, correlates that to the risk factor value of the changes, and tie it all together with the outcome statistics in a simple graphical format. 
Using this information, managers might conclude the risk factor is too low for some changes if most changes are showing a failed review status. Similarly, if a high ratio of high-risk changes indicate the outcome was successful, maybe the risk analysis rules need adjustment. The value here comes by maybe eliminating the necessity to review certain changes, thereby increasing the change lifecycle efficiency within the organization. Release control provides extensive filtering capabilities, and these prove useful in nearly every module because it allows users to filter data on diverse criteria, reuse filters in any module, and even combine filters to create complex criteria. Two of the most common options include filtering by priority and the implementers assigned to a change. This way managers can even view reports for a specific implementer. Other filters include the ability to view changes for specific time periods or changes voted for a review by the Change Advisory Board. You can also filter out and view only changes that are action items related to a change request. Another popular option allows viewing changes scheduled for the upcoming week or month, for instance. Plus, this is very popular for finding only changes requiring a CAB review that occurred since the last CAB meeting. If a change manager is responsible for select business applications, he or she may even want to filter out and view only changes affecting those specific business apps. Also after changes are implemented and closed, those responsible for reviewing changes probably only want to see those not reviewed. Finally, is if those aren't enough options, one can combine any number of filters using the Union Filters feature. In closing, one important aspect of filters is the ability to create either private or public filters. By creating public filters, anyone using release control can see and use those filters. Private filters, however, are just that, only for the user that created them. In addition to defining a public filter, managers can define them as time period filters and use them to begin creating time periods such as change windows indicating changes are allowed, blackout periods when no change should occur, and neutral to change periods, meaning just that. Aside from the main filtering options, any user can create quick filters and find information quickly. Just remember these are not persistent. This brings us to the last but certainly useful ability to filter on the change request ID, as shown in the right. Here a user can specify part of a change request ID number with a wildcard such as an asterisk. Thus, one can surely recognize that almost limitless options exist to filter changes and report on change analysis data, making these two highly valuable features of release control. Thank you for watching this brief presentation. Please feel free to contact us at Configure Consulting with any questions. You can find more informative videos like this one on our website. Thanks again and have a great day.